Good day. I've got so much work today, it's crazy. Walk the pet, do my homework, take a bath, and, on top of that, study some chess. I guess you could say I'm overloaded. Thanks, Chloe. That was a pretty good introduction to overloading, which is the topic that we're going to be focusing on in this lesson. Let's take a look at this first position. White's got a pawn on a7, and of course, he'd like to advance that pawn. But there is a problem. The rook on d8 is making sure that doesn't happen, because, well, the black rook would simply take that pawn. Now, we can say that that rook has one task, to watch the a pawn. If we can manage to give that rook another task, perhaps we'll force that rook to go somewhere else, and then we can promote our pawn. And yes, we can achieve that by playing this move. We're doing a check. And now, as you can see, the rook has to take care not only of the um, white rook on d4, but also the pawn on a7. So the rook is forced to take, and now the pawn can promote because the rook is no longer here. So in essence, what we've done here is given the black rook a second task, and it cannot cope with both of them. You've probably heard about multitasking, and computers can do that. Well, humans are not so good at multitasking. We can manage maybe two tasks at a time, and not too well. In chess, often chess pieces can only cope with one task. Let's move on. This is a very similar position. Again, the rook is watching the a pawn and making sure that it goes nowhere. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is give that rook another task. Here we go. Now the rook is overloaded. It's got to do too many things. It's got to watch out the a pawn and it's got to do something about the check. So the rook is now forced to take and then we promote our pawn. Let's see another example. This is quite interesting. It's black to move here. Now, black threatens to take this queen, but right now that queen is protected. But there is another threat. The rook on h3, on h6 I mean, is also attacking the pawn on h3, which is protected by the bishop. So as you can see, that bishop is doing two things at a time protecting the h pawn, but also protecting his queen. And normally, what we do in positions like this is carry out one of the two threats so that that bishop is forced to quit one of his tasks. So after rook takes pawn, so you can see that bishop is now forced to take and now the queen is no longer protected. So we can simply take the white queen. Let's move on. Okay, this position is nearly identical. The bishop on g2 is protecting the h-pawn and also his queen. And here we've got a wonderful move with the black pieces because we can actually take the pawn on h3. Now, the first variation goes like this. If the bishop takes the rook, then again the queen would be lost. So, maybe we can do something else. There is a second variation. The king can take. But in that case, it is true that the bishop is protecting the queen, but now the queen can come to h5. And look at that. The king is in a checkmate position. The game is over. Okay, the original position is quite interesting because it's a little bit more elaborate than the position that we just saw before this one. Okay, because there are two variations, two possible captures after rook takes h3. The main line is if bishop takes, the queen on c6 is lost. All right. Now, in this position, it's white to move. Um, we can't take the queen on f4. I mean, we can, but we gain nothing. The bishop can take back and, you know, nothing very much happens there. However, we do have another forcing move because this bishop on b8 is not only protecting the queen, it's also protecting the pawn on a7. And if we sacrifice our rook like this, the first thing that we notice is that if the bishop takes the rook, 
then the queen would be lost. And the other possible variation is if the king takes, then the king is too exposed and we can actually bring our queen to a5 and deliver a checkmate. All right, let's see another position. Now here, um, the black queen is watching the B pawn, making sure that it doesn't promote, but it's also covering the H7 square because the rook is attacking it and so is the queen. So you've already learned what to do in positions like this. We carry out one of the two threats. Unfortunately, we've got to watch out about the move order because if we play this move promoting our pawn, it looks good at first sight because if the black queen takes our queen, then the white queen will take on h7, protected by the rook, and that'll be checkmate. But in the original position, black is actually threatening checkmate. So if white gets a queen, black can simply go queen to g1 and the game is over. Move order is extremely important in chess. So what we're going to do is do, do it the other way around. We're going to take on h7 with check, the black queen needs to take back and then we promote our pawn. Now the king is in check. This queen cannot go to g8 because then the king on h8 would be in check. So the only move is queen here, but the queen is not protected. So after queen takes queen, we've got checkmate. Let's move on. Now this is quite a nice position because white's only got a queen and the knight and you know black's got the queen the knight the bishop and rook maybe this check coming up if we play knight to f7 then the queen can take and after queen takes queen bishop check king here bishop d4 discover check with the rook king here and then c5 and in the resulting position black is better because this pawn in the long run could become quite dangerous and black's got a bishop a rook a knight and the pawn in return for the queen and that's that's pretty good for black so instead of that white's going to do something else this queen on g6 is actually overloaded because it's protecting both the pawn on h7 and the f7 square. So again, we carry out one of the two threats. We've already seen that knight f7 is not good enough, but how about queen takes? This is good, because now when the queen takes, there's no longer a queen here covering the f7 square, and then we just go knight f7. Checkmate. Beautiful. Let's move on. All right, in this position, this rook on f8 is covering the g8 square and it's also protecting the pawn on f7. So we're going to give that rook on f8 another, another task. Rook to g8. The rook on f8 must take. The rook has been deflected and that means the knight can now come to f7 and deliver checkmate. Now it's interesting because quite often um, when we deal with tactics, tactical ideas will mix and it's hard to tell whether it's more of a um, deflection or uh, overloading it depends on the position okay sometimes there's a very thin line and it's very hard to tell let's move on all right in this position the black queen is making sure that the white rook doesn't get to e8 so what we're going to do here is give this queen another task. We're going to sacrifice our queen like this. And after queen takes queen, there's no longer a queen on d8. And that means the white rook can come to e8 and deliver checkmate. Pretty simple. And this is a similar example. The black queen is defending the rook but also watching the e8 square so that the white rook doesn't come there. So what we do is we take that. And now that queen has too many things to take care of. And after queen takes queen, the rook comes down and delivers checkmate. This is similar. In this position, the king does, the black king does have the h7 escape square, but 
what we can do is move our rook over there because this rook on d8 is covering the e8 square and also protecting this queen. So again, let's give that rook another task. Check. Now if the rook takes, then the rook is deflected and we take the queen for free. The white king doesn't have to worry about rook down because um, h2 is available. And if the king comes to h7, we can simply take the rook on d8. And now our queen on d2 is protected. Here's another one. The queen on e7 is protecting both the f7 square or pawn and the bishop on c5. White's attacking f7 with two of his pieces. So what we're going to do here is take on f7. The queen is going to take back. And now that queen is no longer defending the pawn. We take that bishop. And now those two pawns are hanging. White's got a winning position. All right. Well, that just about concludes our lesson on the topic of overloading. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.